All right, so we've just checked into the Paramar Resort on the east coast of Koh Chang. And um, random hotel, but absolutely stunningly beautiful at the same time. Perfect for me, as it's on a bay, so we've got sea, but we've got no sand. So I've got no sand to deal with, but the view is absolutely incredible. There's an island uh, just opposite our hotel. We're going to go there in a minute, um, so we're going to show you that. Don't know the name of the island, but I will put it over the top. Everybody knows about the west coast of um, Koh Chang, but no one really knows about the east coast. So we're going to show you a little bit about the east coast. So you're gonna have to excuse the state of the place guys but look yeah so we've got a little sofa tv overlooking i'll show you outside in a minute but overlooking like a little lagoon we've got a little finley here what else we got Italy coffee machine fridge everything you'd need let's go and check out the bathroom i haven't even looked at the room yet Robes are nice. bathroom all right all oh, right, there's cheaper rooms without a view. It's 1,700 for the cheapest. 1,700 for the it cheapest. It includes on-crown as well. And then it was 2,200 for a deluxe. 2,200 for a deluxe. And then this was 2,600. So this is 2,600. So you're looking at about 60 quid. But, but once I show you the room, once I show you the view, you're going to understand. You're going to understand why. Right, you stay here, big boy. You stay there. You don't come out. All right, you're going to come out with this. All right, so. This is what I'm saying, hold on. This one just for looking, Peyton, no swimming. Too hot in there, Finley. Too hot. No swimming, just looking. No swimming. You want to go swimming, buddy? Yeah. We've got to go to the island in half an hour. I'll get them changed. Over here, we've got the swimming pool. We're on like this little lagoon, which Finley is trying to get into and trying to swim in. Um, we're trying to do our best not to let him do that. Then opposite, right over here, is that island and we're going to that right now they're going to take us on a boat over there apparently it's just a little beach nothing more to it but it looks really really cool so let's go and do that right now So we've just landed on the first island. It's called Got Sai Kao, which means, uh, if I've said it correctly, White Sand Beach. But it's not the Sai Kao, Sai Kao, which is um, the famous White Sand Beach on Koh Chang. This is a very, very deserted island. It looks like they do get a few boat trippers um, from the mainland, but we've had the benefit of our hotel just being just over there and getting a free boat over here. So that's another plus for East Ko Chang. So for me, I've only been here for about an hour and I already much prefer this side to the west side. And I'll tell you a bit about why in a minute, but it's mainly just because I don't really like beaches. So Helen loves beaches, but I like being able to see the water, um, but don't necessarily like sand. So if I can just be in a bay where I can see the sea and it's all nice and calm, you can do boat trips um, straight from your hotel. That's a bit of me, but anyway, definitely if you're here on the island, I would say that this is a boat trip worth doing because it's a quick one. Um, we were literally, we we're on a boat for less than five minutes from the hotel um, and we're on a powdery white sand beach, um, which is perfect. So yeah. I can't believe this was just over the road and we weren't even gonna, we weren't even planning on a boat trip. It's so nice. Over the road? Yeah, just yeah. over the road, <laughs> over the over the estuary. What is it? Yeah, 
it's so beautiful it's like we are literally stranded on a desert island and we're just waiting for someone to pick us up i hope they do pick us up because we've only got well we've just eaten our picnic we've got no food you're eating all your food finley <laughs> okay. hello me there's a bit of cracker left so would you recommend this east side yes i mean the drive wasn't that bad like if you get off the boat and then you do a left instead of a right and go away from white sands it's not that bad and it's a really nice drive really easy really flat and then you're on such a more scene well not see at the other side of scenic as well but this has got a different feel completely different feel it's lovely so you would do both yeah do both we'll just do this if you've already been to Koh Chang before oh where do you want to go Coffee shop. You want to go coffee shop? Daddy, Daddy Chew. Where's Daddy Chew from? I'm not sure, but I can't believe you want to go to coffee shop when we're here. Where's Daddy Chew? On a desert island. Do you want to go to the coffee shop? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is this your favourite time ever, Doggy on the Beach? Oh, no. No, like mug. <laughs> I'm not the ear, Finley. I don't. All right, so we're back on dry land. I just want to speak a little bit more because I'm not sure how much of the footage I can use from the island because it was really windy. So I don't know how bad that was, but either way, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video today. We're just going to chill at the hotel today. Um, it was a pr bit of a long drive, but tomorrow I've got something really special for you guys. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, you're going to enjoy it tomorrow. We're going to go to Ko Chang's only coffee plantation and their coffee shop which we did actually stop at this morning arranged to go there tomorrow and see the farm so that's going to be really cool and then we're going to also go to a seafood restaurant that's been recommended to me by one of uh our subscribers uni so thank you very much uni 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 yeah so he's recommended that everyone that i've spoke to said it's really really good it's like a mangrove fishing village so we get picked up on a boat go through some mangroves uh, to this little fishing village and to this restaurant and eat there just want to say first impressions of the hotel absolutely love it um, we're back now off the boat as I said and Finney's having a little swim in the swimming pool like you, you you've got the swimming pool behind us you've got our room with the lagoon so you've got like this nice blue lagoon and then you've got that um, amazing view out onto the uh, bay which we just went across on the boat. So yeah, absolutely stunning place. It, as I said before, it's a little bit random, but this is more my kind of hotel than uh, the last hotel we're in, which was the Centara. Um, it's not gonna be to everyone's taste, but it's clean, uh, hot water's working, air con, fridge, all that stuff. I mean, the layout might not be to your liking, but um, for me, it's absolutely perfect. Just based on the views and the facilities, you have to excuse me, I'm so, so hot and tired and hungry. I haven't eaten since like nine o'clock this morning. So I'm gonna grab some food now, watch the sunset, then tomorrow we're gonna get cracking on Eastern Ko Chang. So Ko Chang Island is famous for its world-class beaches and five-star resorts. What it's not so famous for is homegrown coffee, but that's exactly what we've come to find today over on its less traveled, beautiful East Coast. So we were supposed to go up to the coffee fields, the coffee farm, the coffee plantation, whatever you want to call it, um, and have a look at how they make the coffee, how they grow the coffee um, before we sat down. But as always, it seems when I'm on an island and I try to do a video, it is absolutely bucketing down. Yes, the heavens have opened and we are getting absolutely drenched. So I thought I would have the coffee first. Me and you can have a nice coffee, a little conversation about Eastern Park Jag. So as it's raining now, I'm just going to sit here with my coffee and I thought I would speak to you a little bit more about the east side of Ko Chang. So we've only been here for around 24 hours on the east coast um, and already I much prefer it to the west coast. Now, the west coast 
I can understand why people go down. I can understand why people like it. Um, it's, it's where all the restaurants are, where all the bars are, uh, where all the upmarket hotels are. But, like for me, personally, as much as I enjoyed, like we went out for Mexican the other day, I did enjoy that, went to a Greek restaurant, really good. I don't really, I'm not in Thailand to eat Western food. Um, I can cook Western food at home. So, I want to see, and I'm not there to be in five-star hotels and... It's, don't get me wrong, it's nice. I'm not putting anyone down who likes to do that. Like Helen likes to do that. My wife likes to do that. So it's, I think it's a good mix that I like things a little bit more rustic and she likes things a little bit more upmarket. And we usually meet in the middle or we do one, like do the more upmarket sort of resorty stuff, one half of the hotel and then come for the more rustic sort of rural holiday for the second half of the hotel. But even Helen is saying how much she's loving the east coast of Kochang. It reminds us a little bit of Komak, which is another island um, about 45 minutes, an hour away um, on a speedboat. Um, it's in this vicinity. Uh, there's Komak, Kokud, and um, we've been to both. The preferred Komak, very small, like very flat like this. Like the east coast of this island is very flat, full of rubber trees, palm trees, uh, durian farms. Um, and now we found a coffee plantation. Um, so yeah, farming is very big on this side of the island and it reminds us of being on like a smaller, sort of more relaxed island. The roads are really good. Uh, we got told the roads are terrible. The roads are flat, really nicely paved. If anything, they're better than the roads on the other side of the island. And yeah, we went on this amazing uh, boat trip from our hotel yesterday. We were staying at the Parama Hotel. It's a bit random. It's like a very... It's, it's like a Roman hotel, just in the middle of a Thai jungle. But it's really nice. It's like overlooking a bay. You can see a couple of islands, one of which we went to yesterday called White Sand Island, Ko Sai Kao. And yeah, it was really, really cool. We got taken over there for free. If you're staying from the, at the hotel, you go over there for free. And there wasn't many other day trippers there. There's not much to do on the island, but I got some really nice drone shots and stuff. You should check that video out. I'll put a link up here. But yeah, just in general, the East Coast has been really, really good so far, barring this horrendous weather. So the rest of the day, we were meant to be going back today, but we are actually going to stay another night to get some videos done. So what the plan was to go to this place called Salakok Seafood, and it's in the mangroves, and you've got to get a boat there. So they take you on the boat. I thought it'd be really cool. I was going to get a drone out, do a really nice video. I've heard the seafood there is absolutely amazing from... Uh, from my man Yoni, who uh, follows this channel. Um, and we messaged a little bit on Instagram. He sent me that as a recommendation, which is the primary reason we came over to the east side of the island. When I had a look at that, looked at the other uh, picture of the island, and then Tim Jackson, my old mate, told me, look, it's nice and flat over there. It's a really nice drive. So based on those two recommendations, that's why we came over here. So that was the plan today, was to go to Salakok Seafood, and then also go to like, there's a mangrove walkway i think it's called the red bridge and it, you walk all the way through the mangroves you know um down through like a little estuary and stuff and i was gonna obviously do a video of that as well but i think to be honest we're gonna be rained off for the foreseeable so i'm gonna leave it here for now um and hopefully i'll be back in a sec when the rain clears and we can go up and have a look at this coffee plantation otherwise we're just gonna have to do it again tomorrow morning but so far so good, top coffee, really beautiful surroundings, really nice people, lovely little wooden coffee shop. Definitely stick it on your list for Kochak. All right, see you in a sec, one. All right, so we're on. We are going to go and see the coffee farm. <clears throat> Luckily for me, uh, the owner, um, the owner's son, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Swadi. I'm Daniel. Swadi Cup. Swadi Cup. Swadi Pima. Um, he is going to take me, he speaks perfect English, which is good for me, because as you know, my Thai, maybe not good. Okay, so we're going to go up now, take a look at exactly how they grow these delicious coffee beans. Okay, so we're here, we're at the coffee farm. Absolutely 
beautiful, stunning forestry. We've got rubber trees, we've got palm trees, and then we've got the coffee trees. Daniel, you said you had 500? Yes, 500 trees in Sikashan. Wow. How much coffee does that produce? About two tons. Two tons? Yes, two tons. Wow. Every... Every year. Every year, yeah? yeah. Wow. And do you keep... You sell it or you keep it here? We keep it on November mm. and we roll it all the year that oh, wow. we sell in the coffee shop. Wow, amazing. All right, let's go take a look. Well, I think maybe I should have worn better shoes. So, and these are the coffee? Yes, coffee beans. They will go to the green ones and then there will be red one on November or October. Ah, okay. And this is Robusta? Robusta, yes. Okay. So is the coffee you roast just pure Robusta? Only Robusta. Only Robusta? Yes. Yeah. So strong? Yes. Coffee strong. in yurt yurt. Coffee in yurt mark. Yurt mark. <laughs> uh, and do these get bigger, the coffee beans? Coffee beans, yes. Yeah. They get big like... Like a late cherry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're green now and then they go red in... November. Geez, November. Wow. But you still have beans from last year? Yes, we have. The last year, all year. Yeah? We collect... Uh, before we open the shop, we collect the bean one year. And then we collect... Then one year next, we will open the shop that we have coffee bean ah. to sell in the coffee shop. Wow. Amazing. This is so cool. I never knew, I never knew you could grow coffee here. <laughs> I know I'm a bit stupid, but... Um, Normally Thai people know that the coffee bee can go <coughs> in the northern part of Thailand Chiang or Wai, southern Chiang part. Mai, no? Yes. And southern part like... Uh, Chumpon. Trang. 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 Yes. Champon. But yeah. So you're the only, only person with coffee in Koh Chang. We are That's the what? only one person. Yeah. That, but my father gave the tree to other farmer. Ah. To grow the coffee trees, and then my father will buy the bean. Ah, oh, so it gets them work and. Yes. Oh, that's good. That's nice. All right. So they're all also helping out the local community as well. So get down yourselves. Come and check out Ban Cafe. Ban Cafe. Ban Cafe. Come and see Daniel. What's your mum's name? Nok. Nok. Yes. Bird. But yeah. Yeah. All right. P knock. P Nong Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brilliant. This was amazing. All right. We're going to have another little bit more of a look around and then we're going to head back. Hopefully I'll get some drone shots and then we're going to go and check out that fisherman village. All right, guys, let's go back and talk about this coffee. See you in a sec. So obviously I've come at the wrong time of year. If we go at like if we'd have come in November, we, then we could have seen them fully done like fully grown and then they could have um, shown us how they process the beans and stuff. But that aside was really, really cool. It's a beautiful place and it's really nice to know that Daniel's dad um, actually sells the, like gives the other farmers on the island the coffee trees to grow themselves, then buys the beans back off them. They could just grow them themselves, but they do that to give jobs to the other people on the island. So that's really, really nice. So they're supporting the local community. You should be coming down here and supporting the local community too, if that's something that you want to do. So I want to just want to clear up a couple of uh, discrepancies. As I said, I'm not a, a coffee connoisseur. I just like what I like when I'm drinking coffee. I said it was a mix between Arabica and Robusta, but as I suspected, they don't grow uh, Arabica here. So it's pure Robusta, which is probably why I'm feeling a bit wired. Because as I said, Robusta is twice the strength of Arabica and I can only have like two cups of Arabica per day top. So I think that's going to be me done. But yeah, really, really nice place, guys. Get yourselves down here, 100%. Um, this is somewhere you should be checking out if you're on Ko Chang and you like coffee. Next, we're going to go and check out this uh, Salakok seafood, which looks absolutely unreal. Um, I was told that you get a boat there, but then I've just spoke to Daniel, said that you don't get a boat there, but you can get a boat from there. So I'm going to go and check it out now on the way back to picking up Helen and Finley from the hotel. I'll see if we can get the boat because I think that'd be cool. But let me know, guys, will you be coming to this coffee shop if you make it to Got Chang? Yes or no? I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Uh, for now, I'm going to turn the camera off and I'll see you at the next stop. So next stop, as promised, Salakok Seafood Restaurant, and it is absolutely packed. It's one of the most famous restaurants 
on this side, or probably the most famous restaurant on this side of Koh Chang, one of the most famous seafood restaurants on the whole of Koh Chang. So we've come down to check it out. So thanks to Yuni for suggesting it. Um, he told me to come down here. So I'm checking it out for myself. It's super, super busy. So not sure how long we're gonna wait, but while we are waiting for our food, I'm gonna get ordered. Then while we're waiting, I'm gonna have a little look around and show you a little bit around the fishing village where it's situated. So it's situated on the most beautiful little estuary. They've got little boat trips, little mangrove, uh, boat trips going on so you can do that and so I'll show you that while we're waiting and then we'll get eating I've ordered a plethora of delicious seafood let's go all right so I've sat down I've got ordering like I said really really busy in here um, I've gone through and uh, ordered a few different dishes some of which weren't on the menu so I've got well, I've got squid nung manao so so um, squid steamed in lime and garlic and I also ordered some snapper for Helen because she doesn't like much seafood but she's agreed to eat some fried fish so I've got her it's not on the menu but I've got her um, pad pit clear so stir-fried fish with chili and salt and then last but not least I wanted to order the mantis shrimp the Kang uh, pad kapow but they don't have it and they've run out of mantis shrimp. So I've ordered four bunkale. So crab stir fried in that yellow curry powder, which is one of my favorites. Crab and sweet yellow curry powder, match made in heaven. So whatever happens with the food, the setting, as I said, is absolutely stunning. You've got this estuary to my right that goes all the way through the mangroves, um, a traditional Thai fishing village where they're still like fishing it in old boats and they're bringing stuff in as we speak. You've got the boat, men that take people out for the boat tours which you can also do you can also go kayaking which is really nice but to the other side of me you've got like the Ko Chang jungle so you've got like a massive cliff um looks like something out of King Kong or Lord of the Rings something like that like just massive green jungle right so I've got crab claws bit of onion oh I think we've got quite a bit of crab in here let's have a look all right so it's all it's all claw by the look of it Suits me down to the ground. Uh, we've got some chilies, Chinese celery, loads and loads of onion, some carrots, a bit random. And then we've got it all sort of wrapped up in this eggy, yellow curry powder, oyster saucy, milky, delicious sauce. Try and get a little bit of everything. That is decent. It's um, just how I'd want it, really. Loads and loads of curry powder, loads and loads of crab. Um, I do like crab claw, so that I'm happy with that. It's not lump meat, like the expensive big white bitch you get, but. Hmm. Very well executed. It's hard to get this dish wrong, as long as you've got the right ingredients. This is actually quite spicy. Um, relatively speaking when comparing it to another pad bongale which are not usually spicy at all there's a little bit of a kick to it loads and loads of like i said sweet curry powder perfectly complements that sweet fresh crab meat that's a top top dish i don't like too fishy fish this is perfect that reminds me of cod a snapper like cod and it's like, I think it's like fried with jar garlic, garlic and chilli and like spring onions. Mm. It's crunchy as well. I feel like it's got nuts on it or sesame seeds or mung beans, something. Anyway, it's really good. Can you imagine having a food channel in Thailand and your wife doesn't eat sisha or pork? But I'm proud of her because she's, she's getting on with this fish. So, as Helen said, this is snapper, which um, she likened to cod. I suppose it is a white flaky fish. Um, this is pad pit clear. So what they've done is they deep fried the fish in like a, I think tapioca batter maybe, uh, or rice flour batter, and topped it off with salt, chili, and spring onion. Helen shouting nuts up as well. So we'll see, it might be, oh yeah, sesame seeds. Yeah, sesame seeds as well. Good palate, babe. Got a flakiness.
That's good. That's actually better than the crab. And that's absolutely delicious. Super, super crispy batter, and then you've got that chili salt spring onion uh, topping. That is serious. All right, so the restaurant is very, very, very busy. Um, it's Thai New Year. I'm not sure, did I say Happy Thai New Year to all my Thai followers and uh, subscribers? Somebody pee my? Happy New Year. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's super, super busy. They haven't got many staff working. Um, I, I mean, it's packed. There's people queuing out the door waiting for a table, and we've got probably the biggest table in there for just two of us. I think we're gonna go. Um, I, they've forgotten the squid, the number now, um, and the other dish we ordered. But the two dishes we did have were pretty, pretty good. Um, can't really complain and the setting like I said is amazing so if you're over this side of Koh Chang and you want to try some authentic seafood I think if you came on another day and it wasn't this busy it would be absolutely fine but um, it's just particularly busy because it's the 13th today so it's actually Songkran so um, yeah I'm gonna sign off happy Songkran we're gonna go back to our hotel now or actually we're gonna head to our second hotel because we didn't book an extra night and they didn't have any rooms left. So we're going to a different hotel now. That's around the other side of the bay we were at yesterday. So we're gonna go there, check in, come back here when it's not so hot, and then we're gonna do the kayak or we're gonna do the boat trip through the mangroves and we're gonna try and do that mangrove red walk? Red mango mangrove walk, what is it called? Red bridge mangrove walk. All right, so we will be back for that in a minute. All right, so we, we changed our plans uh, from our third stop, which I said was gonna be that Mangrove River um, boat or the Mangrove River water. But Helen decided that it would be a better idea if we went to a place called Long Beach, which is 11 kilometers down the worst road I think I've ever been on and um, up and down hills look, look we're going about two miles an hour what do you reckon two miles an hour I'm looking all right that was an exaggeration we're going about eight miles an hour this is as fast as we can go up this hill oh my god there's no railings either side we could come off at any point um, half the road's broken and when we got to the end finally after 20 eight minutes when it said nine minutes on the gps um it was one of the worst beaches i've ever been to in my life it was a tiny little bit of sand with just piles and piles of rubbish everywhere uh, and a few people building sand castles everyone left after about 10 minutes so um well done helen <laughs> no because originally the there is a resort called long beach resort which has got a beach bar and they obviously keep... what's the bar called there oh f-u-c-k bar I oh, know F U C K U bar. Right? Yeah, fuck you, bar. But so I think if that was still open, they have people to clean the beach, and it was in. I think it was around the corner. It was a bit nicer, and um, that obviously it's not open, so we went to a weird one. Yeah, so basically, the the, the, the reason I've actually done this because I'm still going to go to the mangrove uh, walkway. I hope tomorrow, and if I do. I will stick that up over the top of this so you can see what it's like. I mean, I'm hoping it's really, really nice. The pictures look great. It's like an elevated walkway right over the top of the mangroves. Where was I going with this one? Right, my, basically my point is, if you, oh, even though I haven't been to the mangrove um, walkway, the red bridge, if you have a choice between the red mangrove bridge and coming to Long Beach, 100% do yourself a favor and take the mangrove red bridge. Yeah, but it might all be back Riverwalk. open by the time people come there. So. Yeah, I know that, but all I'm saying is this wasn't worth it. This is a worse view. Yeah, this is a worse view than we've got from our hotel. So we could have just stayed at our hotel and watched this. But you live and learn. If you don't get out and explore, you never find those hidden gems. Am I right, babe? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you've got to just take the rough with the smooth people. You're not always going to find a nice deserted desert island. We had a nice little trip yesterday. So yeah, I don't know. I've waffled on a bit too much about a beach I didn't like. So I'm going to leave it here. We'll see you back at the hotel for our final thoughts on uh, Koh Chang Island. Mwah. All right. So we're back at the hotel now. Um, I can't remember the name of this one. It's the second night. Uh, the Koh Chang Marina Resort. I think it's just where people park their boats. More their boats? More their boats. Um, but it's on this, it's on the other side of the island where we were yesterday. So it's got this amazing view of like a little uh, 
yeah, bay. So um, it's like a sheet of glass. I'll show you in a sec. I'm gonna take the drone out, hopefully grab something to eat. And then I guess we will see you back tomorrow for Ko Chang to Chanterbury. Oh, there's the little madman now. Not bad. Not, not, in, not in the road, Finley. Not that way. Only this way. Little sun crown, baby. Alright, so I'm just going to finish today's vlog. What I will say, um, the rooms are a bit round, a bit rough around the edges, right? But the food is decent here and it's very, very cheap. Um, it's probably the cheapest food we've had on the island and it's pretty legit. Thai food, cheap food, cheap beers and the view is absolutely incredible. And if, if the food wasn't worth coming in for and a drink alone, then definitely Kai Tun, which is the Labrador, definitely 100% worth coming here for so I hope you found this video interesting guys um, I hope we've convinced you to give Ko Chang East a look uh, and I guess we'll see you tomorrow for Ko Chang to Chanterbury because tomorrow we'll be I'm going to be exploring all the little hidden gems in Chanterbury one of my favorite riverside cities in Thailand absolutely love it some really unique eastern Thai food there so make sure you don't miss that so subscribe if you haven't already subscribed hit that like button if you like the video if you didn't like the video then um just find another channel all right that is just about it from us today we will see you again in the next one